Hello everyone, I'm Triple J, and welcome to a special episode I like to call Sinking Ships, the Ginny Torpedo. Now, of course, when I'm talking about ships, I'm not talking about the ships. Or even these ships. I'm talking, of course, about these ships. Kirk and Spock from Star Trek, the original series. Korosami from Legend of Korra. Bubble Line from Adventure Time. The Winchester Brothers from Supernatural. Batman and Superman from DC Comics. Oracle and the Black Canary from Birds of Prey, as well as several others. Now, the one common element about these ships that I've just mentioned is that they're all either gay or lesbian pairings. And they're done because, well, like any other pairing in any other fandom, we, the fans, see something about these characters that we believe makes them compatible and we want to see them together. The other reason that we see these pairings is because there is a distinct lack a positive portrayal of the LGBTQ community within mainstream media. Heck, of those ships that I've just mentioned, they only represent the L and the G of the LGBTQ. And there is a distinct lack of the B, the T, and the Q within mainstream media. The only examples that I can think of are, are well, there is... Bo, the lead character from Lost Girl, who is bisexual and is in a, I believe, last I checked, a sort of polyamorous relationship with a straight werewolf and a lesbian doctor. And about the only transgender characters that I've seen that weren't done as the ugly punchline to some transphobic joke were the Sailor Starlights in the final season of the Sailor Moon anime as well as Claire from a webcomic called Questionable Content. So, those fans who do identify under the LGBTQ banner make ships of the series that they like in order to see something of their lives in the series that they love. However, to date, and as far as I know, only one ship that has set forth on the fandom waters of the internet has come under fire from someone who is a member of the cast of a show. I am talking, of course, about Swan Queen, the pairing of Regina Mills with Emma Swan from the TV show Once Upon a Time, and the cast member manning the torpedoes is none other than Jennifer Goodwin, who plays Snow White, a.k.a. Mary Margaret. Not once, but twice has she taken shots at the Swan Queen ship. The first time that this happened was on Jennifer's Twitter account by way of a derogatory joke when she replied to a fan asking if Emma and Regina would ever kiss. Unfortunately, ABC did not pick up the pilot once upon a time in her pants. Check cable? Now, smarter people than me have looked at this Twitter and really dissected it and broke it down into two main points. The first is that showing a deep, complex, loving relationship between two women who kiss is too pornographic for ABC. So you should check out HBO, which is okay with full frontal nudity, if not outright pornography. The second point is that once Upon a Time is family-friendly. ABC shows family-friendly content. Only straight pairings are family-friendly. So only straight pairings can be shown on ABC, which is watched by families, which is family-appropriate. 
Jennifer's reply to these criticisms and others has been the same derailing reply that usually comes from the privileged class whenever any criticism comes their way from minority groups. Why are you so angry? It was just a joke. Stop taking it so seriously. And as if that wasn't enough, within the last month, Jennifer once more opened her mouth and firmly shoved her mouth into it when she labeled the Swan Queen pairing as incest. Now, for those of you who aren't fans of the show, a quick explanation. See, Emma Swan is the daughter of Snow White, and Regina used to be Snow White's stepmom. For those of you who know what the stepmom bit means, it means a relation through marriage, not by blood. You see, Regina was forced to become Snow White's stepmom by Cora, Regina's mom, who forced her to marry King Leopold, Snow White's dad, and men's rights activist and all-around douchebag. Thus, the relation between Snow White and Regina is a legal one and not blood, so it cannot be incest. It can not. Jennifer's defense that it is incest speaks to a greater sense of homophobia and a disturbing one at that as it takes aim at a fan pairing. More often than not, it's hard to find positive portrayals of a minority group that one belongs to in mainstream media. But then to have someone who is a member of a show take specific aim at a fan pairing that is in a minority group, it's hair-pullingly frustrating. Sure, as of the last few years, there have been some positive portrayal of the LGBTQ community in mainstream media, such as Batwoman from DC Comics, Bo, who I mentioned earlier from Lost Girl, and Captain Jack Harness from Doctor Who and Torchwood, all of whom have had deep, complex, loving relationships. There's still a megaton representation of straight white people in our media. And then, when a show does focus in on the LGBTQ community on a mainstream network, we end up with shows like Wheel and Grace and The New Normal, which star gay white characters, as played by straight white guys. On a side note, the people behind Wheel and Grace didn't hire John Borrowman because he wasn't gay enough for them. Wasn't gay enough. A guy who came with the gay pre-installed wasn't gay enough for a show about gay characters. The mind boggles. So of course fans come up with Slash and Fem Slash and alternate universes where the genders have been swapped because at least then they can have something to relate to and enjoy. As someone I follow on Tumblr once said, it's like starving for scraps while everyone else around you gorges themselves on buffets and smorgasbords. So what can be done about this? Well, the inclusion of more LGBTQ people as well as LGBTQ people of color who have even less of a presence on mainstream media, of course. Let there be well-written stories and deep, complex, likable characters that everyone can relate to and enjoy. But in regards to this situation specifically, Jennifer Goodwin must apologize. And it has to be a genuine apology. And not one of those ass-backwards ones where she says, Oh, I'm sorry, you were offended. And it has to be something that she learns from and become a better person. And if not, after she gives the apology, she should at least stop talking. Don't say anything more. Like, none. Done. Zip. Zero. Because at this rate, she's doing nothing but costing ABC money. And if ABC won't listen to people, ABC will listen to how the money isn't being spent on their product. I'm Triple J, and that's all I got left to say. Take care.